Hello there, Pirate fans. My name is Chris Famulero. Alongside me, for his first time, Jose Feliciano. We are coming to you from the Prudential Center right after Seton Hall's one-point loss to the Xavier Musketeers. And, Jose, it was quite a game, very reminiscent of another Big East game they had earlier this year, the St. John's game. But in that game, we did not get the conclusion that we did in the St. John's game that we got today. Seton Hall lost 70-69 following a roaring comeback in the second half of the second half, but we're going to have to recover the entire game. So from the first half, what do we see? Well, it's certainly a lack of defense from the interior on Seton Hall's part. Mamo College, Philly, and Marl Gill were pushed around. Gill got the start over Michael Enzi, who was... Kevin Willard didn't really want to start him um, in, after recovering from the flu and such. He's fine now, Kevin Willard says, but wanted to see what Romaro could do, and Romaro just did not work out, so we saw a lot of Enzi. But regardless, it was the Tyreek Jones show for Xavier. He recorded a double-double in the first half alone uh, with 18 points and 10 rebounds. So clearly the lack of interior defense was the main problem for Seton Hall in the first half. Uh, overall as a team, Xavier shot over 50%. And while Seton Hall shot efficiently as well, they just could not match Xavier due to the fact that their defense just let up so much. Also, the foul calls were over and over again. It was basically rapid fire towards the second half of the first half of this game. So it really costed the Pirates uh, in the first half, and clearly the hole was too much to dig out of for the Pirates in the second half. And the Pirates ended that first half 46-38 to in favor of Xavier, and then they came out in the second half, immediately got two points off of a steal and score from uh, Quincy McKnight, I believe, and then we started seeing some more foul trouble from the Pirates, as well as just lack of scoring from both teams in general. Both teams failed to make three-point attempts, as well as getting second-chance points. I mean, Xavier was out-rebounding Seton Hall in the game. They ended up out-rebounding them 41-35 to in total, but Xavier had complete control overall. And then came the, about the under eight is where Seton Hall decided that they wanted to come back, but not as ferociously. And then we got to the under four, and Seton Hall said, all right, it's time. We're, we're done playing around, and we want to come back. And, I mean, Jose, let's, let's just go through that final sequence a little bit. Xavier has the ball with about 23 seconds left. They get fouled. They miss that. And then Seton Hall gets the rebound with 20 seconds left. And then it's up to see, Kevin Willard calls a timeout. And it's up to Seton Hall to get the final basket. And then what did you see from there? Well, clearly the play was to Miles Powell, and that was in fact the play. Uh, we spoke to Miles Kale after the game, and Kevin Willard said it himself that the play was supposed to be all for Miles. It was supposed to be ISO on him. He was supposed to get his shot. Were you okay with the, the shot that you wound up getting? I, no, I'd, I'd rather have Miles shoot. Yeah. But the lanes clogged up towards the uh, towards the end of that play, and Miles Powell instead went to an open Shavar Reynolds at the left wing. And Reynolds had the same shot as uh, that he had against St. John's, which is why it was so reminiscent of that. And unfortunately for the Pirates, Shavar Reynolds missed that shot. Kale got the rebound, but could not get the shot up in time. And unfortunately for the Pirates, fell short. That second half was certainly a much better one for the Pirates, especially in that last six minutes. They ended the second half on a 17-2 run. The defense really shut down Xavier towards the end of that one. And because of that, they were able to come back within so close, but they just did not have enough time on the clock because of the hole they dug themselves in the first half. Very similar to the Xavier game earlier this year, uh, where Seton Hall did end the game on a scoring route against the Musketeers, but this time they were not successful enough to pull out the victory. So Seton Hall splits the series with Xavier Musketeers 1-1. One and one. They will be next back in action Saturday night when they take on St. John's reminiscing that old St. John's game back on December 29th where Seton Hall won that game on a Shavar Reynolds three-pointer. Uh, but this game is going to be in Madison Square Garden. Last time Seton Hall was at the Garden, they knocked off number eight Kentucky for a huge upset victory, and Seton Hall is traditionally very good in the Garden. But we'll have to see how that pans out because the Big East took a big shakeup today, Jose. Georgetown upset Villanova, winning by over 10 points. 12 points, 85 to 7, uh, excuse me. I believe it was 85-73 to 73 in favor of Georgetown. And with Seton Hall now losing to Xavier tonight, they fall to 7-7 seven and seven in the Big East. And St. John's uh, played Providence last night, where they are currently trying to figure out that one at the dunk. So as of right now, the Big East is in a bit of a jumble, and that St. John's-Seton Hall game means more than ever for the Pirates now. I mean, what are your thoughts on that one, Jose? I mean, the Big East this season has been so, I would say, top-heavy. 
uh, with the first two teams, that being Marquette and Villanova. But then the rest of it is just a mixed bag, really. And clearly, St. John's and St. Hall have been at the top. So this game on Saturday is going to be huge. Right now, St. John's find themselves down, at the, or at least at the time of the recording of this video, down at halftime against Providence at the dunk. I believe the score is 34-28. And if for, for St. John's, they lose that game. Then St. Hall is still tied with them for third. Uh, in, in the Big East Conference, which is huge for them. They need St. John's to lose that game because if they are able to come up with a win on Saturday, then sole possession of third place. That game is going to be huge. And like we just said, uh, Seen Hall loves playing at the Garden. It's been a mixed bag. It typically is for uh, St. John's. So far, 2-2 two and two on the season at MSG, last coming off of a big win against Villanova there. But so far for the Pirates, they just need to get it together, and get it together fast because time is running out. There's only four games left in Big East play this season. This St. John's game is huge. Then you have, you're have you going to go to Georgetown, which, again, we know how well they play there considering they just knocked off Villanova. And then the last two home games is against what will probably be a ranked Nova team as well as Marquette. So you got to win. I think you need a 99 record at least to get yourselves into the tournament with a great non-conference season that the Pirates had. Well, that about sums it up here. Uh, like we said, we will be at the St. John Seton Hall game. Frank Frasco and Ryan Clayton will have it to break it down for you there. But make sure to stay, uh, stay tuned in as well for Hall Talk later this week. Again, my name is Chris Famulero. Jose, thank you very much for joining me. Jose Feliciano, we're going to close it out here at Prudential. Hope you have a great night.